In the name of Allah, the most merciful, most gracious, good evening. And welcome to the uh, periodic press briefing to announce the general budget for the fiscal year 1444-1445, corresponding to 2023 AD. We listened previously to the uh, the custodian of the two holy mosques congratulations and approval of the budget and the ministerial council uh, which has witnessed all the uh, kingdoms accelerating growth and fulfillment of a great number of objectives under the vision of 2030 and the strategies and the projects the numerous projects in the sectors. We also listened and we briefly and we recently watched, as mentioned by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the uh, President of the Ministerial Council, on the occasion of the approval of the budget in relation to the uh, achievements which were made in the year 2022 as an outcome of strenuous and great efforts that happened over the previous years. We started to see the outcomes, thank God, in all the fulfillments that we have witnessed in the uh, general budget for the uh, 2022 and what we are planning for 2023. His Royal Highness spoke about numerous strategies which have been which have started to be uh, implemented at a number of targets which have been already achieved and i'm going to mention for example here two important constituents his royal highness was and continues to uh, support uh, carefully first uh, housing and achieving uh, uh, the uh, goals of the uh, citizens ownership that achievement has been extraordinary by increasing the percentage from 42% uh, when we started the vision until we have reached the point today. In addition, the participation, and His Royal Highness spoke about the importance of the role of the citizen as the key player that the kingdom relies on in all the great advancements and progress. And here he addressed the uh, women enablement through which we have been able through a number of strategies, initiatives and projects to achieve a target which was planned for 2030, which has already been achieved at the end of this year. Thank God we have reached to 35.6 or 7 percent of women engagement in the labor market. And the percentages were much lower than lower than half previously. His Royal Highness also spoke about a number of strategies, including the strategies which were recently launched, the industrial strategy that aims to increase and enhance the level of the industrial sector, uh, invest the uh, enablers provided by the government in order to enhance the level of the GDP and enhance the uh, national revenues in projects of the government and the projects implemented by the public investment fund and its affiliate uh, corporates. We've seen excellent and clear examples in the labor market as well in terms of uh, achieving a, a lowering of the uh, unemployment to unprecedented levels we haven't witnessed in the past 20 years. We also witnessed great uh, number of achievements relating to the uh, empowerment of the private sector, the empowerment of the SMEs, and recently we've announced the establishment of the SMEs Bank, and a lot of achievements, thank God, which have also been mentioned by His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman extensively in a uh, speech or in a press statement recently released. In relation to the uh, figures and our expectations, I'm going to uh, speak briefly and then I'm going to open it up for the uh, Q&A. I will speak about the, uh, the medium-term economic growth and I will speak about the uh, budget figures and some key indicators for the uh, fiscal year 2022 and our expectation for 23. In relation to the uh, in economic indicators, I believe, and you can see also here on the screen, uh, 
His Royal Highness uh, spoke about the uh, overall GDP growth by the end of this year to hit 8.5%. This figure, we should probably uh, take it carefully because when we spoke at this time last year, we were expecting roughly 7.4%. And uh, so many were speaking about that the government was uh, rather optimistic. Uh, the, the, the international community has responded and they have increased their expectations. The kingdom was the only one in the G20 where the expectations uh, of economic growth by the IMF were increased uh, twice during this current year, even though they hit uh, reached 7.6, higher than our initial expectations. However, they did not reach what has been actually achieved, which is 8.5, which is the highest among the G20. What's uh, comforting is that it's our focus. Our focus is the overall GDP of the private sector, which is the uh, key uh, point in terms of the economic diversification in Vision 2030 and the empowerment of the private sector. We expect to close this year is about 5.9 percent, uh, the growth of the uh, private sector and the overall GDP, and I believe this is a key figure because we're going to witness over the next few years in higher figures because this is going to start to implement the strategies which have been implemented over the past four or five years. The uh, nominal GDP for the first time in the history of the kingdom exceeds the uh, trillion uh, dollar uh, barrier. We believe uh, and we expect that to close this year by 3.9 or t trillion reals. Next year, the figures in front of us 3.869 trillion, and in 2024, the overall, the nominal overall GDP around 3.94 trillion real. In the medium term, and I think this is part of a journey which we have started when we launched Vision 2030, that plans are transparent, strategies are very clear, and the implementation uh, started about three or four years, and now it's yielding its outcomes. We expect the investment to uh, accelerate in terms of growth, and we have witnessed over this year the growth by the uh, private sector by over 20 percent compared to last year. And with the strategies, including the strategies of investment, the National Investment Strategy, Sharik program, and the uh, SMEs programs, we expect uh, the participation of the gr uh, private, private sector to grow. Also, we witnessed great efforts made by the government, uh, preemptive eff uh, efforts to deal with crises. And I don't believe that I need to uh, emphasize the uh, major successes with great interaction between the government and the citizens in the private sector during the corona pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. We also witness here something similar that happened this year with the government's interaction with the overall global uh, uh, inflation. This global inflation, uh, as estimated by the IMF, 8.8%. Uh, in global economy, the government was able with preemptive measures, and let's remember last, last year, almost halfway through last year, when when the kingdom felt, according to the ex, uh, the expertise of the economists in the government, that the measurements that were taken by some countries in relation to supporting their economies and providing uh, cash flow, including the United States, the European Union and others, are going to lead to accelerated inflation. The government took a decision in July of last year to uh, set a cap for the uh, if, for the uh, energy uh, prices and the main cause of uh, inflation in the world was the uh, prices of energy so by setting that cap uh, 
on, on, on inflation in the government from last year, we witnessed good results last year and this year in the levels of inflation, uh, relatively lower and greatly lower compared to the world. The uh, inflation levels in Saudi Arabia, we expected to reach 2.6 and then to start receding next year to lower levels that could reach 2.1 percent. The enablers provided by the uh, government for the private sector, and we spoke last year also when I was asked about the uh, non-oil revenues and the uh, higher costs for the private sector, I mentioned very clearly that the government aims to uh, the uh, aims at the economy growth, which means the growth of revenue, and we're, we're not speaking about revenue growth only. So we took numerous initiatives during this year, including the uh, reduction of some uh, customs uh, fees and also uh, putting some installments of, of uh, financial re uh, uh, for the private sector. They were paid about in, in advance for 12 months, and now we allow that to be paid in quarterly installments. Uh, this accelerated the payments of the dues of the private sector to the government, in, uh, from the government to the private sector, so that the government pays over in 45 days of the issuance of the uh, payments to the Ministry of Finance. We uh, speeded this up. We also accelerated the, the uh, follow-up with jo government uh, sectors to increase their efficiency and uh, speed up their payment processes. Previously, the fourth quarter was almost uh, half the payments of the private sector. This uh, was reduced to 42 or 43 percent last year, and this year is touching about 30 or 32 percent, and, and we believe this is an, uh, an extraordinary achievement by the government uh, sectors and their ability to manage the uh, claims by the private sector. A number of strategies were launched. I'm not going to speak about them perfectly because they have been uh, uh, clear, but His Royal Highness the Crown Prince spoke about the industrial strategy, and I believe this industrial strategy will play a key role in enabling the private sector. Big uh, special budgets were uh, allocated for the strategies to allow the private sector and to provide the infrastructure and also from the legal and uh, governance issue. The, uh, big uh, may changes were made to the uh, government uh, purchasing uh, systems to enable the local uh, uh, content. PIF announced uh, uh, aiming at a 60 percent of local content in the uh, uh, PIF's uh, companies. The PIF also uh, worked uh, especially excellently in the local content. It's created 60 countries. They yielded huge uh, uh, demand which activated the uh, private sector. And also, it, it was able to create 500,000 jobs for uh, the citizens out of these projects. In relation to figures, and probably you have seen that in the uh, statement and the announcement by the Ministerial Council uh, recently, we're going to close this year hopefully with an over uh, oral revenues of 1,234 1, billion, uh, expenses of 1,132 billion rials. Therefore, the surplus is going to be around 1 and 102 billion rials this year. Next year, we expect the revenues to hit a trillion 132, expenses a trillion and 114 billion, and the surplus to be 16 billion. Uh, in our expectations in general, uh, that we are a, li a little bit uh, conservative. And in our statement, we published three expectations or three scenarios for revenues. We're going to find it in the uh, full statement. The, f of course, the uh, scenario which was announced today and uh, a rather conservative one that bears all the changes and the uh, fluctuations in the world economy that might impact the uh, revenues in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and is and an optimistic, rather optimistic scenario in revenues that bears into consideration the possibilities of, pos of positive developments in the global economy that can increase 
revenues. It's good to mention the uh, allocations of sectors, the general uh, items 165, the security 105 billion, the uh, military sector 259 billion, which uh, is higher this year and compared to last year. In the uh, public administration 37 and the economic revenue 72 billion, the uh, health and social development 189 billion, reals and in the uh, municipal services 63 billion and i would like to clarify here that there is a shift after the ministry of after the com the ministries the mini the budget of uh, housing moved into the municipal after um, the education sector at 189 billion and the basic infrastructures and transportation at 34 billion reals Further details will be available, and you will find them in the uh, statement which was recently published on our website. And I invite you to attend the uh, forum, which will be held on Sunday and Monday. It will be attended by a number of their excellences, the ministers, and with each will speak about their uh, sectors and what has been achieved and their expectations for the uh, next uh, period. We have here the figures of the uh, revenues, three scenarios that bear into consideration all the economic developments at the global level and their impact on the uh, Saudi economy and its in either positively or negatively. As far as the medium term is considered, the figures are here behind me on the screen. It, it, overall uh, revenues for 2024, 100, 1,146 uh, trillion compared to 1,205 in 25. Uh, expenses a trillion 125 billion and in 25 a trillion 134 billion this surplus will be 21 billion in 2024 and 71 billion reals in 2025 you're going to find all the details in the statement thank you so much and i hope and i wish you us and our citizens and our dear kingdom a uh, blessed year. I am very optimistic of what has been achieved in 2022, and I'm even more optimistic of the future. We have great opportunities, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince was very clear about the role of the citizens. Personally, I am very optimistic, and I'm highly, highly proud of what I see and what our sons and daughters in the kingdom are doing. I can see it at here in the Ministry of Finance and the our ecosystem in the ministry and the centers and uh, commissions uh, under the ministry. And I can also see it and witness it in, in other ministries and government agencies. Our young men and women are working around the clock in order to fulfill that target. Great passion is driving them. We appreciate that. I'm not going to speak too much, but we can see that leap in the private sector, a huge leap in various uh, in, in, in entrepreneurship. And I can, if I can give you one figure that attracts me, if we see that in 2022, as much as we have seen in terms of challenges and difficulties in sectors, the number of uh, projects that were started compared to ones that were closed in 22 is eight times. We opened eight times more uh, entrepreneurial projects in 2022 compared to the ones that were closed. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to welcome all your questions. But please, before we open that, I would like to emphasize two things. We have very short time and I hope that the uh, journalists will introduce themselves, ask one question only, so that we uh, give time for this big audience of journalists. And um, let me start here, please.
محمد عامر صحيفة دي المواطن نيوز بيبر محمد عامر المواطن نيوز بيبر سم ثينك ذات ذيس امبروفمنت اون ذي بادجت ريسنتلي از اسكرايب مينلي تو ذي هاي اويل انرجي برايسز اند ات دازنت ريبريزنت ذي سكسس اوف ذا غفرمنت اند ذي ايكونوميك دايفرسيفيكيشن وات دو يو ساي تو ذات بليز Thank you, Mohammed. And if I may also take two or three questions to save time, and then I'm going to answer these questions. Good evening. Sabq Abdul Hakim Shara. Sabq website Abdul Hakim. Your Excellency, probably this is a recurrent question. The surplus, Your Excellency. Will they lead to re revisiting the uh, uh, citizens' uh, financial support or the VAT? Good evening, Muayyad Muafa, Al Watan newspaper. What is the cause of the uh, revenues compared to the revenues of 2022? Let me answer these questions, and I'm going to take some more questions. Muhammad, thank you so much. Uh, the non-oil revenues. We are very happy with and thank God for. And we thank God yesterday, today, and we thank God every day for his blessings, including the uh, uh, treasures underground, which are highly efficiently invested in our kingdom. For sure, the uh, oil revenues played a role. I want to emphasize, however, that the policies and the structural reforms that took place over the past four or five years played an active role in alleviating the uh, fluctuations in revenues. Uh, you notice that the uh, non-oil revenues represented roughly 8.9%, roughly out of the overall GDP, in 2016. We're going to close this year, hopefully, at 16.9%, the double. You notice that the oil revenues covered in 2015-2016, 90% of our budget. This fell down to 65%. Therefore, yes, the oil revenues have a role. However, the structural reforms have a key role which is a, an, a growing role with the growth of the economy, the revenues, the non-all revenues grow and cover a greater percentage or part of the budget. That's one. Two, what are we doing? Where do we spend? And that's extremely important. The government worked uh, and, and created excellent initiatives to increase the efficiency of uh, government spending allocate spending for strategic priorities that enable the growth of the economy and the growth of the private sector, open uh, employment opportunities for entrepreneurs. And I spoke about some figures, over 270,000 uh, uh, projects uh, were established in 2020. This is because we created these opportunities out of these initiatives. The government is focusing greatly on uh, directing expenses towards projects and strategies that achieve a better revenue and better service to the uh, and, and also outcomes and opportunities for the private sector and also creates jobs. For Mr. Abdul Hakim, you talked about the uh, surplus and thank you for your question. Of course, what we are spending in the budget is to support the citizens, the state and the growth of the economy in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is to help and is for the sake of every citizen. And we have seen uh, the, um, the, the, uh, the outcome in, in, in the shocks and the crises and how we dealt with them. Therefore, 
We're not going to necessarily speak about direct support. However, the strategies and the enablement and the reforms that take place in the government uh, services are for every citizen. The opportunities which we create for entrepreneurs who are our children, our brothers and sisters, sons and daughters who benefit directly from them and employ other citizens. As far as the VAT, I previously mentioned and in on different occasions about the value added tax and so that we get a little bit out and, and at, to go to a greater level of the economy. If we notice what happened over the pa past eight or nine years and because of the uh, high fluctuations, the government had to use a huge reserve of, uh, of, of uh, parts of reserves to c to cover the uh, we used about a trillion reals from our government uh, uh, reserves to cover the deficit. The government did not only do that, but it also resulted uh, issued uh, loans and uh, and 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 borrowed about 950 billion reals also to cover the uh, budget deficit, part of which was to support the private sector and to finance the private sector. So, when you use two trillion riyals over nine years, which were financially difficult and challenging years, and where we successfully managed that, and, and also efficiently, and then you achieve a surplus for one year, I don't believe then it is going to be wise to rush to change our fiscal policies, which might, and, and now we can see uh, high fluctuations. We are part of the world, and we see what's going on around us in the world. It may not be wise to change our policies uh, hastily unless we make perfectly sure that we have the strong economic f background we have provided enough or greater reserves in order to revisit or uh, our fiscal policies such as the VAT. Mr. Muayyad from Al Watan newspaper, why did the revenues uh, were lower in 2023? Simply because the government, as we have seen last year and the previous years, Generally, in our uh, expectation of revenues, we tend to be conservative. It is better to be conservative than to be very optimistic, and then you uh, have to deal then with uh, changes that cause uh, a shock. Therefore, our tendency is to be conservative. Please, your question, and probably the, the, the question over there. Good evening, Khalaf Al Khalaf, NBC. Thank you for all this clarification. My question What does the budget bear in terms of solutions in order to reduce unemployment? And probably this is everybody's question. Khalaf Al Khalaf from NBC. Mohammed bin Saad, Al Ikhbariya. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency. I would like to ask Your Excellency, uh, we, the, the, the prices of so many commodities are high. And despite these great efforts that we can see in order to contain this inflation, what are the solutions that the budget of 2023 are going to uh, do to support or maybe or is there any uh, probably study to at least exempt basic commodities from the VAT thank you your excellency mr khalaf i will uh, return back to you but mr khalaf your question is extremely important and I do appreciate the desire of so many citizens to find an opportunity to serve the kingdom and to serve themselves and their families as well. Unemployment, and we can see the figures, has started a, uh, a declining trend. This was not uh, coming from nothing, it was 
the outcome of great efforts and the solidarity and work be uh, that went between the government and the private sector. The outcome was an accelerating decline in unemployment. At the end of 2021, unemployment was about 11 percent. We closed the second quarter to 5.8 percent at the kingdom uh, wise. The uh, among the Saudis, 9.7, which is the lowest in 20 years. So I am optimistic. I'm actually highly optimistic of our capability and the capability of the Saudi economy to create more opportunities and more entrepreneurial opportunities. It's not enough to provide jobs. There are so many people who want to have uh, opportunities for entrepreneurial projects. And that's what I said, uh, witnessed by the or testified by the number of uh, entrepreneurial projects which were opened here. We have joint efforts here. I'm speaking about joint efforts not only by the government. There are efforts done by the PIF. And I also mentioned the uh, creation of these uh, uh, 500,000 jobs by the uh, PIF affiliate companies because of focusing on the Saudi citizens and their skills and capabilities, these excellent capabilities that they have that make a difference and can create uh, huge uh, 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 outcomes. Also, the National Development Fund is supporting the private sector and its uh, projects. This uh, fund is supporting other funds and is financing and funding the projects of uh, private sector and plays a key role in the uh, growth of the private sector and creating further job opportunities. Mr. Mohammed, thank you for the question. I spoke previously about inflation at the global level and the estimations of the IMF that this evalu the inflation is 8.8 .8 globally, which will decline, rather decline to 6.8 percent next year. I'm speaking here global level. And here we notice that the figures of in, uh, inflation this year are 2.6. Let me remind you again that the cause of not reaching of the global uh, inflation, not hitting the kingdom, is ascribed to two main reasons. The first reason is the early uh, government uh, interference. And the main cause in the uh, global inflation were the uh, energy prices. So when the government set a cap last year in July of last year on energy prices, we were able to slow down the uh, or stop the uh, inflation in the energy prices, which also uh, helped reduce or limit uh, inflation in the kingdom. Two are the preemptive strategies which we have taken, especially to uh, the food. Our food security strategies were uh, witnessed billions of reals in investment. And when we saw the uh, growth of uh, global in inflation, the government pumped billions to support the private sector to increase their uh, uh, reserves. Therefore, we can see uh, plenty of commodities in the markets, and we have to also think about the availability of commodities. What is worse uh, than of inflation is to lack these uh, commodities in the markets. Everything was available in the markets, thank God, and at reasonable, yes, somehow inflated because we are part of the world. However, it's not at the same global level which we have seen in global markets. The third factor that helped also uh, to a great extent in not hitting or reaching the global inflation is our uh, connection the, of real to the dollar and the increased uh, and, and uh, the increasing value of the dollar, which also uh, compared to other currencies. When we uh, let me give you an example. If a certain commodity in Japan increased in 2022 because of the inflation by 20 percent in the Japanese prices, 25 percent in, in, in Japanese prices, and we import them in the kingdom, we're going to import them at the same price where we import them because the price, uh, the exchange price between the real and the yen has increased. The value of real against the yen increased. Therefore, even despite that uh, inflation, then for us the exchange rate has bridged the gap uh, of importing that inflation. How do we support? And probably Mr. Mohammed asked 
the roles played by the government. The government continues to work with the private sector, and one of the examples is to support um, herders, the producers of poultry, and also supporting the uh, importers. Some importers, with the increased uh, global prices, believe they have higher risks because they have to import at high prices. Now, globally, the prices started to uh, uh, decline. For example, the prices of wheat are somehow at the same level as they were last year. However, when they were high, the uh, uh, businessmen were a bit uh, uh, apprehensive so that they would sell and lose. The government here interfered and provided initiatives telling the businessmen to import the amount that provide a strategic uh, amount and if the prices fall down we're going to compensate you this actually happened and the government continues to do that uh, and, and not only for one time um, i promise this gentleman to ask a question and then the lady over there and then i'm going to take that lady over there Ashadli from Al Waft uh, from Egypt. Your Excellency find the recession of growth this year with what happened this year. In this recession, will the kingdom continue to head the levels of growth in the G20? Will maintain its uh, position in terms of growth among the G20 countries? Also, you spoke today about about the importance of reserve to find to face challenges, the importance of reserve to f face crises. At the same time, in the latest investment uh, conference, you excellency said the world or the current global uh, uh, crisis will continue for next year, where these expectations were translated in this current budget. The lady, please. Meret uh, from Bloomberg. Meret Magdi, Bloomberg. The kingdom offered uh, support for some neighboring the countries that face uh, economic crisis, such as Egypt. What are the sums that are allocated by the kingdom to support neighboring countries in 2023? And does the kingdom intend to offer more support to Turkey and Egypt next year? Thank you. Thank you. Amal Saeed, our card newspaper. Amal Ukad, Amal Saeed, our card newspaper. Your Excellency, how will you deal with uh, with the uh, surplus in the uh, budget? Thank you. Thank you for the question. As for the uh, growth levels, and I emphasize that numerous times. And I would report that Vision 2030 is based mainly on the diversification of the economy. What does that mean? It means that we're not going to continue to rely on only one source of revenue. Yes, we were blessed by God with oil and we're going to invest this blessing uh, irresponsibly, but it is uh, highly volatile and flexible, uh, uh, fluctuating. But Vision 2030 is f going to free us from being uh, tied to only one uh, source of revenue. So when we focus on GDP, the overall GDP, and what we see daily is the total GDP of the uh, of the private sector, because this reflects the diversification of our economy. So we exclude oil. And, and also uh, government expenses, and we focus on the private sector. The private sector will grow this year, with the will of God, by, by 5.9 percent. And we expect in the medium term for that growth to continue and to increase for over 5.9, and that's important. Two, we are not in a race. When we speak and we say that we are the highest growth uh, in the G20, we're talking about a fact that in light of the global, the challenging global uh, condition, the kingdom has achieved a uh, growth of 8.5%, which is the highest, but we are not racing with anybody. 
we we wish all the best for everybody and we also seek to develop our economy so what increased our gdp this year is a the uh, oil uh, gdp by i think 19 percent and the GDP of the private sector of 5.9, which is our concern and focus. It is important for me that next year and the next, the following years to grow by 5.9% and even more, and God willing, we are going to achieve that. As for reserves, I think it is extremely important that the public uh, finances are able to deal with crises. And we have witnessed that in 2020 with the pandemic. We have witnessed that also in our ability to deal with the uh, shocks of the fluctuation of uh, energy prices uh, at the global level. And we were able with great flexibility and resilience to deal with that and we will continue god willing to do that therefore the question that was made by the uh, the uh, reserves here the, it, it, the same thing applies here the, uh, the the surplus are going to be allocated at the end of the year the key factor at least in this current uh, time is going to go to reserves to enhance our financial reserves and, and part of that, and, and which will be finally decided in the first quarter by the uh, fin uh, the government, part will go to the uh, development national development funds, and probably part will go to the PIF, or to accelerate some strategic initiatives. The question, Mirat, she. Uh, spoke about the situation in the region and I think that's an extremely important question the kingdom is part of the region and part of the world and has uh, cares and concerns for the region and we heard about some statements or announcements by of renewing the uh, deposit to uh, Pakistan Pakistan is an important country for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and we will continue and we will sustain our ex special relations and support them to the best of our abilities. We also saw other huge deposits given to the uh, to Egypt like 10.3 billion dollars of uh, deposits and uh, the government has recently announced a few days ago uh, an extension part of these uh, deposits which were due uh, recently five billion dollars uh, it's also important that we started to invest highly invest in Egypt the PIF has announced uh, uh, quality investments in Egypt and continues to uh, consider other opportunities and I think this is even more important than deposits uh, the deposits are there and then they are withdrawn however investments stay for for and, and encourage other investments the same applies also to Turkey we speak about uh, a, a deposit of five billion dollars to uh, Turkey and our relation with Turkey uh, is really improving. We aim to see investment opportunities in Turkey and in other countries, and the PIF has announced a number of uh, affiliate companies or uh, establishing companies in a number of uh, countries. Let's take three questions, three last questions. The gentleman here, there, and the lady over there. Yes, please go ahead. Bandar Slis, Al Wiam newspaper. Thank God, first of all, for the surplus which we have seen in this year. The last uh, surplus was in uh, 2013. The figure, which uh, is one. 102 billion uh, rials. The next uh, year is going to be 16 billion. My question is the focus or next uh, expenses, what uh, new initiatives or what new areas are you going to focus on? Thank you, Your Excellency. My name is Nisreen Bakhit from Nikkei, Japanese Nikkei. 
Uh, I'd like to ask you about Turkey, which you just mentioned. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about the potential $5 billion deposit with the Turkish Central Bank? When could it happen? What time frames are we looking at? Are the talks in the final stages? Any information is helpful. Thank you. Mohammed from Bawab Arqam. My question is about we'd like to know the priorities of privatization over the next few years. Thank you so much. Thank you. And one last question here, please. Naif Nayan, Ajel. Naif from Ajel newspaper. My question, Your Excellency, what is the percentage represented by the uh, national uh, con uh, content of uh, the uh, budget, especially with the tendency to focus on local content? Thank you. Thank you, Naif. This is a good question. Uh, Bender, the surplus this year is 102 billion riyals. The estimated surplus next year is 16 billion in the, in, in the um, main scenario. And as I mentioned previously, the uh, estimations are rather conservative. And we have two other scenarios. Therefore, the uh, surplus might be uh, higher. Our focus next year in general is F uh, funding strategies. We're speaking about strategies and strategic projects. There is daily work of the government, medical health services, education services, um, maintenance, transportation, and this has uh, uh, periodic, continuous budgets, and there are strategies and in strategic initiatives. F funding is not only based on what is provided by certain agencies to ask for new funding, but they have to provide or give strategies that will be carefully studied, including the uh, strategic uh, uh, committee headed by the uh, Crown Prince. And if they were approved, they go to the financial committee and also assigns its uh, finances. And then it comes to the Ministry of Finance for implementation. Therefore, it, it's related to a, a number, a, a long procedure, including the uh, procedures of the uh, uh, Spending uh, Efficiency uh, com Commission. And here I would like to thank our colleagues in the Commission of the uh, Efficiency uh, of Spending and what they are doing in their commission, the, our youth there, and what they're doing also with the government agencies. Many government agencies have teams for the expenses efficiency. They study these projects, and when they are approved strategically, they study how much or are they possible to be implemented at a lower cost and higher value. Therefore, when you speak about what they are, I ask you to go back to our strategies, the trans strategies of transportation, investment, uh, logistics, in, in, in developing infrastructure, the strategy of transportation, the strategy of logistics services, the industrial strategy, and so on and so forth. For Ms. Nisreen, she asked about Turkey and the uh, deposit, uh, which I mentioned, and whether it is going to happen uh, shortly. The decision was made between Saudi Arabia and Turkey. The, as I said, our relations are good, and we are seeking to develop them further and uh, have further cooperation. But as for the financial part, yes, the discussion is now on low only about the uh, some, uh, for example, trying to uh, cross T's and uh, dot some I's, and, uh, and 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 it can happen within days if we conclude these uh, discussions. As for Mohammed and Nimr, thank you for the question about privatization, which is important. Privatization means two things. First, to enable the private sector to do what it is doing in a much better way than the government. The go private sector has the ability to um, implement projects and operate projects at a, a better speed and dynamism. 
and also at lower costs, usually. Therefore, we look at the privatization from that perspective. What is the optimum value that can we can achieve for the public by giving it to the private sector to do this service or that project? The uh, strategy is about to be completed. The privatization governance has been uh, announced. We spend a long time on the bylaws over the past two or three years in completing the basic work, which is the legal and governance and the bylaws and, and the system. However, the privatization continued. We've seen successes either in the uh, partnership uh, contracts, over 22 partnerships between the government and the private sector were uh, approved in different areas, uh, ports, uh, desalination, water desalination, uh, sewage systems, other sectors such as the health sector, logistical services and other sectors. Expectations for the first quarter of next year to see the, the publication of the uh, bylaws or, or maybe the sectors that will be privatized. There's about 200 projects that will be privatized in different levels. Part are in the, uh, uh, the supply and demand and part are past that stage and they are in qualifying the uh, contenders and the projects were uh, made and we are studying the tenders made by the private sector. Naif, a very important and last question here. I think we went a bit after that. The local content is a journey. And it is not only a one-step uh, thing. Local content are uh, government policies which we have uh, initiated when we have adjusted our uh, systems and we have laid the uh, uh, set minimum uh, standards for uh, local content. When we created the local content and, and uh, g government procurements that identify what are the uh, procurements, what are the services, what are the contracts that are available in the private sector, in the local private sector, which can be, uh, w w which we can ask our contractors to provide them from the local content, from the local uh, uh, suppliers. I do not have a percentage because it depends on the sectors. In some sectors it hit 100 percent. The local content and government procurement uh, commission in uh, collaboration with the uh, spending uh, efficiency and the Ministry of Finance, they all agree based on certain parameters about what things what we are not going to buy except from local content where we are not going to accept any non-local content. We have, uh, uh, and, and we have also uh, preferences of 10, 10, 20, 30 percent from not local content. Not only that, but I also spoke previously that the PIF and its affiliate companies are started to be committed to the uh, percentages of local content and also to give them the uh, right to, uh, in, in, in some, because they uh, achieve their goals in terms of uh, uh, safety and security and the uh, availability of uh, commodities in the, for example, Aramco has uh, two pro programs for local content, two very ambitious programs, and we're speaking about billions and tens of billions. SABIC, same thing. Other major companies such as the electricity company started their plans in local content. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who has been here and I would like to conclude by extending my thanks and appreciation always and forever to our soldiers on the borders. I want to thank our security uh, men and everyone who serves the country, Saudis and non-Saudis. We are in the same ecosystem, working shoulder to shoulder, working side by side. I want to thank everyone and I would wish you a blessed year for this kingdom and for its inhabitants. 
and all those who work. Thank you so much and see you later on.